But tonight, tonight we finally got a way getting rid of the craft stuff that we do with it, all this stuff here. We're going to finally use our scroll saw to do some manly work. We're going to do scroll saw dovetails, and Bob is going to show us how to do it tonight. Let's see it. Thank you, Bob. Hey, I am? <laughs> Unless you want me to do it. I, I did practice a little bit. Did you? All right. Okay. Um, the way this thing started out uh, a few months ago was I was having a chat with uh, one of our presenters that was here earlier this year and telling him about the, the difficulty that we have with uh, getting scroll saw programs. And one thing led to another. He suggested a thing or two. I suggested a thing or two. And he says, why not, why not do... Uh, dovetails on a scroll saw. And that made me start thinking. I got, I got how many dollars invested in jigs and routers and router bits and we're going to do this on a scroll saw? You're nuts. <laughs> so he, uh, he sent me a link to uh, some dude that in Europe that had done a uh, done dovetails, interlocking dovetails on a scroll saw. And I thought that is just clever as all get out. So I figured I'd share it with you. Now, Hans gave me a, a flyer on Saturday that showed uh, how to do dovetails on a scroll saw, but they were, the, they were the type that overlapped this way, straight across. If you try to turn that at an angle, you got a whole different, whole different animal. It requires uh, quite, a few, quite a few angles. So I thought, well, let's, let's work on a... Uh, a little bit more of a challenge there. And first thing is you gotta make a you gotta make a pattern in order to be able to do this. You gotta have some pretty precise measurements. You even you even has to do this on the uh, you know when you're doing it with a router and dovetail bits and all that kind of thing. Now that thing may look a little confusing at first, but those dashed lines on there are fold lines. But anyway, just to uh, make the thing, you know, a size that I could deal with, I decided to make it four by five, and then uh, I proportionately made the um, made the sizes of the uh, the tails on here such that um, you wind up with a half tail on each end. And then the, uh, then the pins would naturally be the inverse of this. So with that as a given, the next step is cut the, cut the patterns out, remove the Remove the excess around the outside so that you wind up with just the, the part that is going to cover the wood. Then the way I usually prep a piece that I'm going to do on a scroll saw is I will cover it with packing tape, the uh, 3M cellophane tape. So I cover the whole piece of wood with uh, packing tape, spray the the back side of the pattern and the front side of the wood with uh, 3M77, you know, let it tack up for a few seconds and then stick it together. When you do so, you, you then wrap the edge over the outside and then wrap it around the back so that it's nice and tight. That preps it so that you can then take it to the scroll saw and, and do your cutting with it. Now, I don't know if the camera can pick up here that this winds up being a straight line on the front edge and a curve here, or I mean a, a, 
a diagonal. So that's the part that I'm going to approach first. All of these points in here need to be really crisp in order for the thing to fit properly. And since Hans already addressed those of us that are getting old and can't see, well <laughs> Something's going wrong there. Okay, what I did is I enlarged that uh, that cut there so that I can turn the blade and come across. So now I can turn the blade and come straight across and wind up with crisp corners. Blower broke off. You can pass some of those around if you want. Okay, so that makes one set of pins for uh, one intersection. 
Next, what I'll do is show you the uh, show you the other part. You want me to stay up here, Buzz? The other part adds a degree of difficulty here in that uh, these are at an angle. Those of you that are uh, accomplished scrollers and so forth would probably say you need to tilt the table at this point. I figure, all right, uh, I don't want to I don't want to deal with that many table tilts if I can get away with it. So I built myself a table filter. <laughs> Why didn't you tilt the table was the question. Well, did you build the table tilter? How did I, what now? What saw did you use to build the table tilter? I used a table saw and uh, the tool that I used to accomplish this was a uh, tenoning jig. So I set this in the tenoning jig, tilted the blade at five degrees, and then passed it through, turned it upside down, did the same thing again. I broke it, so. I'm just not giving your eyes open. You heard how many it takes to screw in a light bulb, right? <laughs> I'm sorry, I apologize. That's right. Is that helping? Yeah, a little bit. Yep. Okay, what I just did for those who didn't notice is I, uh, in order to get the cut on the other side, I had to shift it uh, over to the other, you know, the other side of the teeter totter. Uh, if I were using the blade tilt, I mean the, uh, the table tilt, I would have had to go through the setup in order to, to move that thing over. This, this just winds up being much, much faster. On uh, evenings like this, Hans comes deeply discounted. <laughs> okay, now then comes the uh, comes the part where you're going to remove the the uh, waste material on the and that's also the pin angle, right that's at two angles and I want to see you try this by tilting your table and then I'll 
I'll get out of the blowing. Yes. And then in theory, when you get done, this thing ought to fit together. Like that. Wow. Can I pass this one around, Bob, or do you need it? No, don't need it. When you get done making... Uh, making four of them. Yeah, yeah, you can circulate that. Is there a website to get the pattern from or something? Uh, we'll be doing that on our own website. Okay. I'll be, uh, I'll be putting the patterns on there. He made it. dovetails end up doing that a lot of times. Mm -hmm. If you want to do that, so you get a nice snug fit. Bob, can you put a green bottom in there and put your slide in to the thing? You can, yep. And that's the reason he left that's the reason he left a half a tail on there so we would have room so it wouldn't be cutting uh, would you not cut that before you cut your board down? You normally would, yeah, if you were going to put a, uh, if you're going to put a recess in there. Yeah. And you made but, them proud, right, Bob? Yes. The proud, so then you can sand them off and, and they just basically go away. And then when, uh, when you get all done, one of the things that you can do, I chose to, uh, do something a little bit different on this one. I took a, took a made a solid bottom, and uh, to counter what you were, you were talking about there about making a, a dado on the inside. What I chose to do is do a rabbit around the bottom, so that it recesses into the box and gets more, uh, more contact surface for glue. And then I made another piece just like it for the top. So now you've got your traditional lidded box. On a scroll saw. On a scroll saw. <laughs> Thank you.